I'm Will, this is Kenny. We um, run MudTech, mainly making compressed earth bricks, um, but we're also building designers and work a lot with owner builders and run lots of workshops. And um, this light straw technique has been a great one to you know, bring people together and build things relatively quickly. Um, I like that it's uh, pretty much can use any clays, even high reactive clays, are even better because it glues it better. Um, so we just pretty much can get site soil, mix it up into a, um, a clay slip, um, and basically you want to get maximum dispersion of the clay in the water, um, which you know is kind of a bit of a touch and feel sort of sense. Like you, you know, if it's um, yeah, if it sticks to your hand, it's generally pretty good. As Jim was saying last night, you want like a um, a milk, like a thick shake to a pancake mix type. Um, consistency yeah. so you can see here when I lift my hand out it kind of drains off and you can see my hand pretty it's pretty transparent still so yeah. we still want it quite a lot thicker than this yeah I guess um, this is um, as Ray was saying it's like 40% clay so this is kind of a mixture of clay and sand I guess if you're and making a whatever this stuff is yeah so you probably go <laughs> for organic matter you can get bags of clay from the Bunnings, but um, you can also dig down and try and find clay. Yeah, so usually we would, if we're using site soil, like usually you'd have like a, you, when you dig down, you'll hit like a clay seam, and then we'll get the, the pure clay and we'll soak that in tubs for weeks leading up or as long as possible. And then you have someone just breaking up that clay, which goes into the mixer and then that, that disperses it. Yeah, it can be difficult to deal with, but I guess you're basically looking to minimise the thermal mass component like the sands and silt and just get a bit of clay slip <coughs> on the straw. So basically just a minimum amount of clay um, slip on the straw and then that'll dry and you're left with the majority clay. Um, yeah, you majority just, you can't, straw. Yeah, straw, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's going to be the process. We're going to get a slip. Normally you can, make, you can sort of streamline it a bit so that you've got this going into something else into the mixer and then into the wall so you can speed it up quite a lot which is what I like it's fairly light it's fairly user friendly um, and you know no stabilizers cement or lime to worry about um, so we'll go into there someone collect it at the end and just check if it hasn't got a very good coverage of uh, slip on it you can mix a little bit of um, clay slip into it and then take it to the wall and the, we'll run th through the tamping process because I guess that's also key that you don't tamp it too hard you don't tamp it too soft, otherwise it, your wall can be weak or it can be too dense. So yeah, so generally when you're tamping, you want to tamp harder along the edges and then loose in the middle. So you don't really mm -hmm. tamp in the middle very much at all. Um, just tamp along the, the edges of the formwork. Yeah. And I guess safety warning too, this thing is rolling and moving, so just be it's aware of that. filled with spikes, so don't ever put your hand inside it. If you have the catching end, don't reach in to grab it to pull the material out. out. It will come to you, so just let it dribble out. Um, We're probably going to same, same thing when you're feeding it. Don't put your arm in when you're feeding it. The spikes are set back, but we don't want any accidents. Yeah, and so there's a kill switch over here, and also there's a plug over there. So if anything, you hear someone screaming, just... Is this one? Uh, about four. Yeah. The Strawmaster 3000, this one is. Yeah. It's usually a hot topic in the morning to get it working. Um, so I think we're going to, and basically you can regulate the speed of flow in the mix um, by lifting up one end and having a steeper angle or a more shallow angle. We need a bucket at the other end because we catch the valuable slip. You know, that's a thing you can sort of. You know, reuse like, it. yeah, reuse, reuse it. It's it. Yeah. Beautiful thing about everything being unstabilized, you can reuse and capture everything. So we might just fire this up yeah. while we. A couple of bits. So, uh, what thickness wall are you building with normally? Uh, usually about two hundred or two, two to three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did a four fifty wall, um, and that that was probably too thick. Right. Take too long to dry. It was a wet time of year yeah. as well, yeah. and on yeah. the south side. So they just had to have fans on, yeah. Yeah. like inside, because they were getting mold issues. And yeah. uh, the other thing is, it's ideal to take the formwork off straight away. Otherwise, yeah. you do get uh, sometimes you get mold forming pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of it's just surface mold. 
Yeah. Um, and then you do get sprouting sometimes. Yeah. But that's alright. Sprouting actually helps because it uh, the sprouting is drawing the moisture out from the inside. Yeah. Mm. So people get concerned because they've got sprouting walls, but it's actually a good thing. It's a green wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that all dies off. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the quicker you get the forms off, the better. Right? Yeah. What do you think about this, Kyle? Yeah, I was very keen to see this one in action. Often it's good if there's wet stuff that comes in and you've got some dry stuff in it. This is a light earth construction where you've got straw that's coated in a mud slip, not a lot of mud, and they tamp down the outer walls inside this formwork and you tamp down near the wood of the frame and that's the formwork and this lower section the formwork has been removed and lifted up. Here you've got we've got cob on the outside and we've got your light earth. Light straw, yeah. And so we might be using you know, the cob is a thermal mass as well as structure. Oh, yeah. Like if it's got like, you know, it's, that's maybe 50 mil, 80 mil, so maybe it'll be strong enough to hold the wall together. Um, How high you can build this? Yeah, yeah. It would be able to hold. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, if you've got a timber frame, we've done double story quite easily. Really? Yeah, with this one with the timber frame. Um, so, yeah, you can pretty much do as high as you want as long as you've got a structure. Camping. Why are you tamping it? Uh, just to get a, a firmer wall. Why are you tamping? To make it more compact. Take out the air. Why, why do you have to tamp it? We need to. Density, yeah. oh, you're right. So we go back more in the edges and none almost in the middle. <laughs> What's she doing? I have to run it in. <laughs>